I actually want to ask you, um, how many episodes is the show? I'm glad you asked. There are 12, there are a dozen episodes of The World According to Jeff Goldblum um, that come out on Disney Plus starting November 12th. That's a Tuesday, I believe, and then the, the, the next Friday is the second episode, but then every Friday after that, you gotta wait once a week for all 12 episodes. So I saw the first two last night. What'd you see? I saw the sneaker episode and yes. the ice cream episode. Yes, sir. Um, they were both really, both were great. You I'm, like them? Thank you so yes, much. Yes, I am totally looking forward to seeing the that's, rest. That's wonderful to hear because nobody's seen it really. You know, you're one of the few few first people who've seen it. Um, I'm so glad, that's I will, encouraging. I will say to you that anyone who's watching this who ends up watching the ice cream episode, you better have ice cream in the freezer. Because <laughs> as soon as I finished that episode, I went right to my freezer and started eating. So yes. thanks a lot, Jeff. You're so welcome. What flavor did you have in your freezer? Uh, it was like a vanilla caramel something or other. It was very good. <sighs> oh, I love ice cream. And I had denied myself ice cream low these many decades because I've been, kind of, you know, maybe a bite here or there. But, you know, I ate more on that show. And yeah. and we visited that USS America. We visited the brave men and women of on that aircraft carrier and brought them because they have ice cream. So I didn't know they brought ice, you know, they have ice cream socials to, you know, ease their loneliness and difficulty and great challenges, you know, and it's somehow ice cream has the power to be nostalgic and uh, make them feel good. I, I am curious, did you film all of these at the same time or were you filming an episode, taking a break and coming back? No, no, you, they, it was a lovely schedule, rigorous, but Lovely. I, I didn't want to be away from my wife and two kids. I got a little boy, four-year-old, and another two-year-old boy. Uh, but no, we kept going, and it sort of st started to expand as we as we went. And for the last I don't know five six months, we've been you know I did I didn't leave home for more than a week or so at a time, uh, and then I'd have a little break back home. But no, we 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 kept going. It was like a great summer camp of some kind, or a couple of seasons camp that took me where I wouldn't have gone otherwise all over America. The, the one thing that I found, like watching the sneaker episode, which I really enjoyed, because yeah. I've heard about sneaker culture, but um, this show, I've never seen like sneaker con before, before watching your episode. I didn't even know about it. Once a year they have it, and where did we go in Baltimore? I don't remember the city, but I did remember the amounts of wads of cash that were on display. It's amazing. I didn't know. They, they don't really exchange with anything but cash. So they had big bags of cash there paying un unbelievable amounts for sneakers, which are highly prized now. You know, in the last couple of decades, there's been an explosion of these things. I didn't know about any of it. It's amazing, isn't it? Y you got a pair of, I forget the gentleman's name, but you got a very limited pair of sneakers. One of a kind. Exactly. He made, he's called the Denim Doctor, and uh, he, he the sh no, he's called the Shoe Surgeon, the Shoe Surgeon. And he made them for me, bespoke, we talked, and he included something personal in them. They were... Uh, absolutely amazing. And then we went to the headquarters of Adidas, which is how you pronounce it apparently. Um, uh, Adolf Dassler, Adidas was the guy who, I guess he dropped the Adolf and went with Adidas. Uh, we went up there and one of the things we found out there, technologically speaking, was they put a pair of glasses on me and then they, as you saw, they gave, gave me the shoe, a new shoe, and instead of me just saying, well, I wish this were a little different than this, and I don't know how I feel about that, this, uh, the glasses read my, hacked my inner thinking and feeling. And that's just the beginning of that technology. I read Yuval Harari and he says that technology will go further and will soon be very hackable by technology and be known uh, more than we know our own selves. It's, it's, it was crazy watching that thing, but I'm curious, have you ever, the, the sneakers you got gifted yes. are beautiful. Yeah. Have you ever worn them? Yes. So you've worn them out in, in public? Or just at home? <laughs> so far, just at home. Got it. Um, I can't, they're, they're beautiful. My yeah. question is, doing that episode, did you all of a sudden discover an inner collecting, if you will, towards sneakers? Or are you now going to the shoe store and noticing, oh, those, those Nikes and those Reeboks, I, I need those? Uh, here's the answer to the question. The, um, I have gone through that in my life. I've been sort of an obsessive about a lot of different things. Denim, we do another episode on denim. I've dreamed about and then awakened, must have, I know the pants, I know the pants that'll change my life. I know the sneakers that'll, that I need, because in my just, you know, 
minimal, you know, why, you know, exposure. I, I saw this. Somebody told me about that. I got to go there. I find myself in the car going to the thing, and then sometimes going. That's it. That's the new. That's the real me. I've got to get that in every flavor. And then I had collections of some shoes. I never went hog wild. I was never Imelda Marcos, you know, or somebody I met yesterday with a hundred pair of sneakers, you know. But I had sneakers, and then I wound up giving them all away. I like them because there's a part of me that's very minimal, aspiring. And so my current collection is pared down, pruned down, and no. And I have, I'm thrilled to say, but maybe you may look askance on it. I have a stylist, like many people do, and I trust him completely. We're in cahoots. I like what I, you know, but he says, here's what you need. So I don't find myself going out and going, what do you think? Yeah, give me 10 of them. I'm not susceptible to that anymore, through thanks to Andrew Vitero. He goes, you don't need that. You don't need that. Here, this one will do the trick, you know. So, so that's what I that's what I do. But that thing they made me included little little things that were, came from my life, personal things from my life. Um, I know I got to go, but just real fast, Jurassic World three cannot. I'm so excited you're coming back. Colin said that you have a big part. Colin Trevorrow is so wonderful. He was going to write it and, and direct it. Yeah. Ah, uh, yes. I have a, a nice part in it. I've been reading it every day, working on it, and I'm uh, eager, eager to do it and get reunited with uh, Sam Neill and Laura Dern, and Chris and Bryce, and I can't wait. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So Cannot much. wait to see the rest of the show. I hope you like it.